What is up Wolfpack? Hope you've been well. Really looking forward to today's video. We're going to be walking you through some layered perimeter home defense strategies. In addition to that, stick around to the end of the video because we're going to walk you through how you'll be able to win one of these brand new SC4 survival knives. This is a phenomenal knife. It's a knife you could take to the end of the world. We've already given away three, one to Dan, one to Jeff, and the most recent one to Travis. Really looking forward to sending out the fourth one to one lucky subscriber. Stick around at the end of the video to find out how you can win a brand new SC4, one of the best survival knives in the market. So today's video, we're gonna be talking you through some layered perimeter strategy defense. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that we're actually gonna be walking you through uh, a couple different approaches in terms of how you should be thinking about your home defense strategy. And we're gonna be working our way in terms of, um, you know, camera systems, uh, in terms of home defense, in terms of your nightstand setup, in terms of your safe layouts, in terms of how you should be thinking about your fatal funnels, how you should be thinking about security cameras and lights and signage around your house, how you could be coordinating with your neighborhood, all of those things. Um, and we're gonna be going deep into that. We even got some fun barbed wire over here and when, when that should be deployed, as well as uh, a quick revisiting of the battle belt setup. Um, some home pepper spray gel, some lighting, all kinds of goodies that we're going to be walking you through in this video. Um, but what we really want to do is actually talk first about the philosophy of home defense. And um, what we want to think about is this sort of global, global approach in terms of your threat levels. Now, if you're in the military and, you know, uh, shout out to anyone that's in the military, I have a ton of respect for you. I've actually learned this from, from a couple of special forces guys is that the way that they, they approach this is through a strategy called GRIN. And GRIN stands for Global, Regional, Intermediary, and Near. And so if we're thinking about a global disaster, a global disaster could be like anything from an asteroid or Jurassic Park actually becomes re real, um, or you know Kim Jong Un actually decides to 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 leave North Korea. Whatever ends up being a, a global issue, something that you know. I mean, I, I'm obviously joking around a little bit, but if you if you think about like, hey, an asteroid issue, that's a global issue, and it doesn't really matter in terms of where you're at. Um, now. There's nothing you can really do about that. You know, you kind of just have to, 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 to do what you can. It's some Dante's Inferno type type issue. Um, you know, honestly, you could actually, you could argue that the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic is a global issue. And so that's why a lot of our threat levels were so raised is trying to figure out, hey, what's going on? The next is a regional issue. And a regional issue is when you're like, hey, I've got a, a regional problem. There's actually a problem here. And so like, I know that Mexico, for instance, has a, a problem right now with the cartel and some parts in Mexico are actually more dangerous than parts in the Middle East. And now while the regional problem is definitely an issue, it's unless you're really living on a border town in Texas, it may not directly impact you. And so being able to, to sort of decipher the news and decipher threat levels um, in a way that actually makes sense and allows you to stay focused on the task at hand, it allows you to be like, okay, is this really an issue or not? So if it's a regional issue, something that's in your region, but not necessarily down the street from you, that could be like threat level yellow, okay? And so if I got threat level yellow, it's something I should monitor, make sure that it's not creeping towards me, but for the most part, I'm, I'm not super concerned about that. The next is intermediary. And so intermediary tends to be at the, let's say city, county, maybe even state level. And so am I having any issues in, the, uh, in, in, in my current state, in my county that I need to be, be mindful of? Um, is the homeless population becoming increasingly violent? Is there riots down the street? Um, all of those things that you kind of need to worry about are on an intermediary level. And that's something that you can put like, hey, that's actually at a threat level orange. That's something that's, that's not necessarily in my neighborhood, but it's, you know, it's, it's in my city, it maybe is even in my state and something that I want to continue to monitor on. Now near, near is in the, in the three to six blocks. And so this is something that's directly impacting my neighborhood. And this is threat level red. And this is where you need to you need to you know be at high alert and really start to deploy some of these strategies that we're going to be walking you through and doing whatever you can in order to make sure that your family is safe. And so um, you can use the same thing in terms of when you're thinking about bugging out. Um, you know, sometimes it could just be a hurricane. Like, hey, 
Uh, is it is it is a hurricane a few miles away? Okay, that's threat level yellow. But when, as it gets closer and closer, it, it might end up being a threat level red, and we kind of need to bug out and get to a, to another safe location. So, let's assume you've got a threat level red. Let's assume you've got you know you're trying to protect yourself against a a an immediate threat, and that could be someone from a home invasion, a shit hits the fan scenario, riots heading towards you. That's really where we're going to be getting into in terms of deploying a lot of these fun goodies that are on this table. And number one, in order to even prevent people from targeting our house, and then number two, um, hopefully stopping them from even entering our house. And if they are still stupid and stubborn enough to actually enter our house, deploy the right strategies to effectively neutralize the threat and make sure that your family is, is safe. And so the first thing is just the layout of your home and figuring out, hey, how do I have the layout of my home in terms of my camera and lighting equipment? And so when you're thinking about your camera equipment, or do you have any blind spots on the perimeter of your house? And so I've got multiple camera systems layered around my house. You can see this one, this is, this is a symptom from Simply Safe. Um, I also use Ring. I also use Deep Sentinel, which I've really, really enjoyed. Uh, if I were to name one that I would recommend, it would probably be Ring. Um, I think it's got the best like Wi-Fi coverage. But if you're looking for something that's on a next level, look into Deep Sentinel because what they do is they, um, they actually provide 24 hour coverage. And so if they see someone entering the camera system, they will actually immediately respond with a live security guard and talk to that, that, that issue and be like, hey, what exactly is going on here? And tell the person to leave. And if they don't, they'll call 911 on your behalf. And so having that layered security system between your, your ring, your deep sentinel, your simply safe. And I've got a couple other camera systems and alarm systems set up in the house. Um, just, you know, these are stuff that I've sort of um, bought and carried over the years. And so I just simply haven't given up on them. And so they're, they're, just, they're just there, they're ready to go. And so thinking through your own camera system, whether you have cameras inside, cameras outside, being able to protect the perimeter of your home is super critical. Um, also lighting, particularly spotlighting that turns on with uh, with motion and this this alone will make sure that you don't have any blind spots around your house that nobody can can sneak up on your house without any lighting and oftentimes that stuff will scare them away uh, and so being able to just quickly hit them with a flash of floodlight in fact lighting in general is one of the your number one security tool this is a a torch light and so you can see here it's a it's a 2000 lumen light as well as a, a spotlight on the side. And so I'll be using this when I, when I circle up my perimeter uh, or walk, up, walk my dogs. Um, so making your house a deterrent, trying to find out ways that you can prevent people from wanting to enter your house. And so could you have a bunch of dog bowls sitting out front or even on your back porch? Um, you can have a combination of small dogs and large dogs. Uh, you know, schnauzers and, um, you know, schnauzers have a, a remarkable hearing and they can alert to your larger dogs like your Dobermans or your, or your Malinois or your German Shepherds, your more larger attack dogs. And so you can have a combination of the small dogs plus the big dogs in order to, to, to scare people away. Criminals are looking for an easy target. 40% of home entries are from someone simply testing the front door and, and recognizing that it's open. And so the more layers that you can prevent someone from trying to enter your house, the less likely they will to target. Do you have great signage? You know, this is a very high threatening signage. For the most part, my signage that I have around at the house is, is very, very passive. It's like, hey, you're on camera, no trespassing. But if there was a shit hits the, fi the fan scenario or rioting, or if we were truly in a threat level red, you best believe we'd be moving into more threat level red signage, particularly this one. And so just letting people know like, hey, you're not messing around and that you will be doing whatever it takes in order to protect your family. Um, putting some large boots outside. Do you have some cowboy boots that you can put outside in the, in the back porch or in the front yard? Like letting people know like, hey, you know, there are large military age males living in this house and they are willing to do what it takes in order to uh, to protect the home and the, the, the family inside. Could you set up some, this is representing agave and pea gravel. And so cactus, could you set up some, you know, I, I live in Texas. And so we have, we have cactus and pea gravel layered around the house. 
And what that'll do is, is it underneath the windows, as someone's pacing or casing around the house, they'll step on the pea gravel and make noise that my dogs would instantly hear and be able to, to, to get going. Um, we set up guard line sensors. And so even if the Wi-Fi is cut out, these are battery powered and they allow us to have a perimeter sensor around the house. Um, we've also got some other tripwire sensors that alert us to someone coming. And so between the coverage of the cameras, the guard line sensors, the pea gravel, the, the ability to funnel people into the, into the directions that we're looking for, the, the, the lack of blind spots that I have around my home, the, 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 the multitude of, of windows that I have in all directions, uh, makes it incredibly difficult to approach my home without me knowing that, hey, someone's coming. Um, I have, I've been alerted multiple times well before you have even approached the house. Um, and I know this is true even when it's with delivery drivers, with mailmen, um, and with solicitors. They've been alerted multiple times. My dog's already going crazy by the time someone's approaching the house that, you know, it's very difficult for you to sneak up on. And that's part of it is, is like the ability to create these layers of being number one, being able to be alerted. And then number two, we want to deter someone from actually entering the house. And so let's say with all of these, the camera systems, the lighting, the dogs, the, the, um, the, the, the cactus that they have to climb through. If they're still very uh, determined in order to get to the house, how can you prevent them and stop them from wanting to enter the house? And so this is where we get into the fortification. What I would recommend everyone do is number one, make sure that you have one of these. And so what this is, is it actually fits under the door jam and it sticks onto the floor. It doesn't require any, um, any construction or any screwing. It can fit in any door. And by you sticking this in, I've, I've tested this. You can kick a door down. It, it basically locks the door down in place and it's phenomenal. This, this is by Master Lock. It's, it's one of the more tougher duty ones that are on Amazon. And we've got this set up in all of the doors and including some of the interior doors. And so not only do you have to kick down the front door, you got to kick down the bedroom doors and you better believe that 911 has already been alerted multiple times before you've even gotten to that point. In addition to that, all of our doors are steel reinforced. Uh, one of the best upgrades you can make to your house is upgrading your exterior doors. You're instantly going to get your money back. Um, your garage doors, upgrade those. Those will end up giving you um, an instant money back ROI on your, on your, and not only does it have increased efficiency in your home, but you've got increased security. Setting up something like this, we've got a couple of these set up and these are high security door locks. They basically are a hinge that adds an additional interior lock on the door. And so you basically have to rip the door out of the front. You're better off going through the wall than coming through these doors with all of the things that we've got set up. And so in addition to that, the three inch screws, make sure you're replacing all of your screws on your door jams with these three inch screws. If you take a look at most doors, they're using these tiny one inch screws and uh, you know, all it takes is one swift kick and you are, you're inside the house with a three inch screw that goes directly into the door jam and probably even deeper into the studs of the home it becomes incredibly difficult. In fact, if you can even do a steel reinforced door frame, that's even better. Remember 40% of home inva invasions enter through the front door. And so the more you can do to prevent people from wanting to enter that, the better you can be. So let's say you did all those things. You know, you've, you've worked with your, uh, you, you've, you've set up, you've, you've tried to, to deter them as much as you can on the outside. You've tried to prevent them from wanting to enter the house and um, they're still, they're still not, you know, they're, they're, they're very determined. Um, and so sometimes you got to, you know, take a step back and ask yourself, okay, what can I do to prevent myself from even getting into this situation? And so a lot of times these home invasions, I mean, take a look at celebrities. A lot of times their homes are getting robbed by people that they know, people that they thought that they could trust. Sometimes it's the, the, the people that are visiting the house, the home workers, the people that, um, they, you know, maybe like friends of friends that have come over and visited and seen the really nice flat screens and things that you have in the house. And so they've added you on social media, you know, maybe they're down and out, maybe they're, they're, they're casing the joint. You've, you'd be surprised at how many people are monitoring social media, particularly your social media stories and like, Hey, so-and-so is out of town. This would be a perfect time to go and rob their house. Um, keeping your trap shut in terms of what you have in your house. Uh, you know, just trying to, to prevent, you know, people from seeing your home as an attractive, attractive place to, to, to rob. 
um, getting someone to come and uh, remove any packages and mail if you're going to be go on for more than a few days. Um, getting getting a na getting your neighbors, all of my neighbors nearby, um, you know they they have my number. They've they've texted me when they've seen someone in my backyard that they didn't recognize, um, or they've you know sent me photos. Uh, they all are, are you know be friendly with your neighbors. Um, have them bring in your your uh, your trash bins, and you can do the same for them. Um, set up blackberry bushes. So it, this goes back to the to the plants and shrubberies, and so have thorn shrubbery around your house to prevent people from wanting to enter in. Create 3M film glass. And so this is a, you know, this is representing film on any of your exterior windows to prevent people from just being able to, to kick it down and enter. Um, being able to just bring your cars in and out of the garage and making sure that people can't really tell whether you're home or not. And so these are all things that you can do to prevent someone from number one, wanting to enter in, number two, fortifying the house to prevent them from entering the house. Now, let's say you've done everything you can and you're like, look, this is, uh, you know, the, the person is just refusing to get the hint. You've let out the signs, you've done the fortification. This person is clearly very determined in order to get into the house. And so maybe you're, you're, you're in a threat level red and you're recognizing like, hey, there's a riot. People are looting. They are, they are being indiscriminate. This is an opportunity where you can be like, look, it's time for me to start to fortify the house and get it, take it to the next level and really get, uh, prevent myself from becoming an easy target. And so this is really where you can have, use an opportunity like the barbed wire. And so this is a, you know, barbed wire, you can still get this super cheap on Amazon right now and being able to set this up on some of your fences, um, check your local laws and make sure you're not, you know, violating any laws. But you know, this is, this is chicken wire. It's used for, you know, to keep farm animals from escaping. And so setting this up on, on, the perimeter, being able to lock your, your back gate, setting all of that stuff up will allow you to make sure that your heart, your home is hardened and uh, does not look like an easy target. Sandbags, uh, you can get these bags super cheap on Amazon and you can just fill them up either with sand or with, um, with, um, with, with dirt from around the house. And now all of a sudden you can set up uh, a fortification point in your home um, depending on, Hey, like, do you, do you worry about your house being overrun in a shit hits the fan scenario? And so my house is two stories. Um, it's lofted style. And so one of the, one of the areas in my house, I can set these up and actually have full access to all the entry points in the house. And so, uh, if I needed to, you know, those are all, all, all things that you can set up for yourself. Books. Could you create a bookcase down your fatal funnel? So fatal funnel is your hallways. And so if someone's entering your hallway, um, there, that's a, uh, you know, one of the most dangerous situations for a SWAT team to enter because there's so many doors that could be popped open and you're a sitting duck. And so if you could have a bookcase on your end of the, um, of the hallway, you could use that for not just, not just concealment, but cover, uh, you know, a, a, a few, uh, you know, three feet of books is enough to stop any five, five, six round. Not to mention if you're wearing a, you know, a plate carrier, which I recommend you also uh, pick up. And if you have time to put on by all means. And so being able to fortify and really harden your home between the sandbags, the bookcases, the, the barbed wire, in addition to all of the other things will really make your house Number one, be advantageous and really stack the odds in your favor. Remember, you've got home field advantage. You wanna do whatever you can to make sure that, hey, if someone's entering your home, they are at a gross disadvantage and you'll be able to respond with superior firepower and respond in such a way that uh, they, they really do have the odds stacked against you. I mean, you want it to feel like the New England Patriots versus the local high school team. And they're, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna wish that they never woke up that morning uh, having, having, having and wanting to enter your house. All right, so let's say you've done everything you can. You've tried your best to keep the person out. You've, you've set up the camera systems, you've set up the deterrence, and you still have a home invasion. The person is truly determined they're doing whatever they can in order to enter your home. And so with that, it is now time to take this thing to the next level. So in our safe room, we've got a panic button. We hit this, it instantly turns on our uh, 130 decibel alarm, both inside and outside the house. It immediately alerts authorities. If the Deep Sentinel security has not already called the police, the police will be called in addition to that. We've got a camera system set up in our, in our safe room that allows us to essentially clear our entire house just simply looking through the camera system. 
And we're instantly gonna be calling police and letting them know that a robbery is in progress at our location. And that's the key. The key phrase is there is a robbery in progress. There is a burglary in progress. And you're not calling to report a burglary because that implies that it has already happened. You are saying this is happening. It is in progress. And that is the highest level alert to local, secu- to local police. And they will be immediately sending out um, uh, any local units to your location. So while that's happening, we're in the safe room. We are, we are fortifying up. And now my, my wife is, you know, probably a better shot than me, but regardless, we've got this set up. And so it's a home defense pepper gel. And this allows us, even in scenarios where there's multiple attackers, she can, she can use this. Maybe she doesn't feel comfortable using the firearm for whatever reason. She's got this set up. And so this home defense pepper gel, I mean, they use this in, uh, against rioters. Um, although, you know, with all the riots that's going on today, they may have developed an immunity to this. But hey, you've got that going. And so at least you've got some non-lethal options, letting them know and giving them one last chance. Like, hey, you are not, you, you do not want to hurt anyone. You want them just out of your home and you want the threat to be over. So you've got the pepper gel ready to go. In addition to that, um, this is the battle belt. We've got an entire video on the battle belt system. Um, and so if you haven't checked that video out, I'd highly recommend you do so. It goes into a little bit more detail in terms of all of the systems that is built into this battle belt, but let's walk through that anyway. And so the way we've set this up, we've got um, a Leduc knife. And what I like about this is it's actually got a retention clip here. And so someone can't just grab the knife and pull it away from you. Um, we've got two pistol mags. We've got five, five, six mags ready to go. You've got the dump pouch in the back. Uh, you've got the pistol carrier, and then you've also got a tourniquet. Um, and you should always have, you know, tourniquet slash IFAC close by and near at hand. I've got the IFAC on my plate carrier. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll usually put this on and the plate carrier at the same time uh, to make sure that I've got enough coverage uh, and, you know, be able to, to sort of wait out the, 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 the perps from getting there. And so you've got, you've got the battle belt ready to go. And um, you can use that to make sure that you've got enough ammunition and enough enough magazines in order to, to, to respond to the threat. In addition to that, I mean, your light is your number one self-defense tool. And so you've got this light in addition to the light that's on my firearms, on my, on my uh, AR-15, I've got a light, um, but this one's also got a crenulated bezel. And so if, you know, this is something that I can just use when I'm, when I'm walking the dog, but you've also got the light here. And so you can attach that as well. And so, You've got these things ready to go, and you can immediately respond to the threats with um, with superior firepower. Um, you've, I've also got this, you know, the USAA member card, and so if for whatever reason we, you know, we were in the unfortunate situation where we did have to neutralize the threat. You've got the post incident instructions, phone number to call, um, and tells you exactly what to do. Obviously, your your heart rate's going to be elevated. You're going to be stressed out. Um, you just went through probably one of the most traumatic situations that anyone could go through. And so you wanna make sure that you've got, you've got these instructions ready to go. And so, you know, calling 911, explaining what happened, um, you know, saying you were attacked and you feared for your life, uh, pointing out the evidence, requesting metal, medical attention, uh, requesting an attorney. You wanna make sure that, hey, like, you know, this is a traumatic event and, you know, you, you, you just had to, do something that you didn't want to do and you really tried everything you can in order to prevent that from happening. And unfortunately it did. Um, in addition to that, you want to make sure that you've got good hand-to-hand combat skills. Uh, if you've never done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it is incredibly humbling. For someone that thought they could fight, my first time doing Jiu-Jitsu, I immediately got hand manhandled by someone that was 50 pounds my junior. And uh, I, honestly, after two years, you could really take out anyone. Um, you know, you, once you hit that blue belt level, you are really in a position where you can, you can effectively engage with someone in a, a grappling scenario, which is oftentimes what a lot of these matches ended up with, whether you're fighting for your knife or fighting for your gun, you want to make sure that you've got some good hand to hand skills in addition to, to just relying on your firearm. Not to mention, it's a great way to stay in shape and it's a great way to keep your cardio up. Uh, make sure you're doing your CrossFit workouts and your, your metabolic conditioning. And so that way you can stay lean and you can make sure that you can, you can respond to any threats, not just by relying on your shotgun or your AR or your pistol, but rather, hey, if for whatever reason, it did end up getting into a hand-to-hand combat, you would feel comfortable being able to engage with that, that individual. In addition to that, make sure you're not just relying on sport level jujitsu, but you're actually practicing with blue guns and with blue knives 
and seeing how does this, how does my skills translate when we're fighting over a knife or we're fighting over a gun? How does my skills translate when I'm getting elbowed in the eyebrow uh, or getting, you know, knee in the groin? Um, does my skills translate against someone who's, you know, 240 pounds and muscular and, and you know, geeked out of his mind? Um, those are all things that you have to see in real time to really understand, hey, just how helpless you can be and making sure that you're setting up your systems appropriately so that way you are not in a position where you are, uh, you are compromised. Now, if you are in a, in a situation where you're not at home, you know, this is representing some safes. Make sure you have multiple. I mean, this, this is a super cheap safe. Um, it's not something you want to rely on if you're not home, um, but it's something that, you know, if you can, you can get a good, high, highly rated gun safe and have that bolted down. Most safes are, they're not actually broken in, broken into at the house. They are taken away from the place. And so you want to make sure that you've got, you know, your solid gun safes taken care of. And then you also want to make sure that you have some secondary safes that are protecting some of your more precious metals and precious jewelry. Um, and don't put it in the, in the master bedroom closet. That's the first place they check, put it in other places, put it under the sink in your kitchen, put it in the pantry, but hidden behind some of your rice, put it in your laundry room, put it in, uh, you know, your attic, find areas that people would have to go out of their way in order to find the, the, the locations and the spots for don't put it in your garage where anyone in your neighbors could drive by and see it, find locations to put your, your more valuable documentation and all that other stuff in a place that even if all of this stuff failed um, and you had your your victim of a smash and grab you would be able to be protected and and have a high likelihood of them not finding what they were looking for and so um, you know with this whole layered approach this whole layered system i hope you're able to find exactly what you're looking for um, you're able to create a system that works for you i hope it inspired you to really go out and, and um, put some stuff in some thought into your own home security system. Um, you know, maybe thinking through like, you know, what what can you do in order to make sure that your home is better protected and uh, and really prevented from um, from any future home invasions. Now, before I let you go, um, I did want to talk to you uh, about some things that I have tried that I have stress tested and that have not worked. Um, number one, these like stun gun flashlights. You know, I thought this was going to be a good purchase in that it uh, would be both a flashlight as well as a stun gun. Unfortunately, these things have yet to have good reliability after just a few uses, a few whacks, and ended up not working out. And so this was, this was just a, a poor purchase. And so these, these gimmicky flea market type tools, don't waste your money, invest in the tried and true, and, uh, and you'll, you'll, your money will end up going a lot farther. In addition to that, um, I used to be the guy with a baseball bat behind the door. Go go to and try a swing of baseball bat in one of your hallways. You will hit everything except for the perp. I mean, other than you potentially popping them with the butt of the baseball bat, it is not going to work. And so um, you really want to make sure that you're stress testing the tools that you're using and just recognizing like, hey, stuff like a baseball bat just isn't going to have an impact on a home defense issue. And so, um, you know, the stuff here I've used, I know that it works. Um, oh, I forgot to mention this thing. This is really cool. This is a doorstop alarm. And so if someone were to open the door for whatever reason, they got through the, uh, the barricade with this just quickly, lightly depressed, it has 130 decibel alarm. Sometimes these, these other alarms, they take, you know, they have a 10 second delay, but at night you could set these up. And so you've got an additional layered approach. And these are also great for travel. If you've got a daughter or you know a wife that's traveling, you can have these in a uh, in a hotel room. You can stick it under. And if someone were to open the door using the the wrong key card, or maybe someone was being shady from the hotel lobby, um, this would immediately depress and set out a 130 decibel alarm that everyone in the hotel would be able to hear. And so this is a great you know just part of the, that layered approach. I want to make sure I got a lot of stuff on this table here. I want to make sure that I got I caught everything. I think I did. If I didn't, leave it in the comments, and I'll be happy to explain a little bit more about why I, why it's on the table. So I hope that helped. Um, I'd love for the community to add anything else that you think might help the rest of the community in terms of creating that layered home self defense system. Put it in the comments. What have you used? What has worked for you? If any of you have you know the unfortunate experience of 
dealing with a home invasion, would you mind sharing that experience and, and talk through what happened and, and what lessons you learned and hopefully the lessons that you can you that you brought in can educate the rest of the community and help them be better prepared. Um, so thanks again, Wolfpack. Really appreciate you sticking around. Before I let you go, I did want to mention that 500 subscriber giveaway. We just gave away this knife to a Travis. So Travis, congratulations. We've got this knife coming out to you. Um, so we're going to be doing now a thousand subscriber giveaway. Y'all have blown me away with the amount of support that the community has given me, Wolfpack. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, let's get us to a thousand subscribers. Let's do that. And so that, that way we can actually end up monetizing this channel and hopefully end up using some of that money to buy some more incredible things that we can test out and continue to, to deliver more value to y'all as a community. And so how do you enter? All you have to do is be a subscriber and then number two, leave a comment and uh, we will be able to ship this out to you. And so if you want, you can you know subscribe here, leave a comment on this video, leave a comment on any of my other videos. Each comment on each video is one entry. Uh, and so uh, the more that you, you leave comments, the more that you'll be able to be entered. And so I'm really looking forward to sending this out. We've already sent out three, one to Dan, one to Jeff, and the most recent one to Travis. And so really looking forward to sending that fourth one. Uh, I mean, the last one we sent a week ago and we, you know, it's, it, this channel is growing so fast, we might send this one out in a week too. And so make sure you're, you're commenting as quickly as possible. Turn on the notifications so you're aware of when we do the giveaway. Um, and give me a thumbs up so that way we can help out with the algorithm and actually grow this channel even faster so we can uh, we can send this out sooner to everyone. And so really looking forward to sending this out. It's an incredible knife. I mean, you know, this is, it's it's quarter inch of 1095 carbon steel. I mean, you could take this thing to the end of the world. And so really looking forward to sending this out to one lucky subscriber. Thanks again, everyone. Looking forward to the next one. Stay safe, y'all. Cheers.